G'day guys and gal. In Warhammer, there are some that stand above the rest, mortals who transcend the physical limits of their bodies to become literal gods of war, fighting and even beating beings that were engineered to be significantly more powerful than they. The greatest example of this is the Emperor's Champion, Sigismund, founder of the Black Templars and Kicker of Chaos's ass, a warrior so feared and respected that when he was eventually slain in his old age by bullshit hacks, his body and sword was returned to the Imperium by the forces of Chaos. Considering Chaos gets a hard-on for skulls and violating corpses, that's a big deal. They probably knew that if they messed with Siggy's corpse, he would come back as a ghost and pull a Lord Croak on their ass. Sigismund was always a beast, virtually unbeatable in fair combat, and with a surprisingly open mind. However, when he was chosen as the Emperor's champion and given the sole task of slaughtering every single Chaos champion he could get his hands on, that's when the real fun began, and Chaos was taught to fear. The slaughter Sigismund delivered to the traitor legions has been carved into their very being, and even in death, he still hangs over their heads as the aspect of vengeance. Before we get started, guys and gal, we are only 6,000 subscribers away from One Mind Syndicate. We're about to defeat them after all these years. And coincidentally, and quite conveniently, 40k Theories is pretty much on this same amount of subs. So this hectic, one-sided, ego-driven internet validation war will take out two birds with one stone. So grab your parents, grab your siblings, grab your wife's boyfriend, and get them to hit subscribe. So I never have to think about those boring ass wiki readers ever again. Today we'll go over why Sigismund is such a beast, going over some of his lore, but spending most of our time on his badass moments, as well as showing off the effect he had on people. Let's get into it. Sigismund's rise to fame and glory was astronomical. Unlike a legendary marine like Dante, Sigismund was born on Terra, but his pre-space marine lore is mostly unknown, as it's so irrelevant compared to what he became. Acting as Dawn's first captain from nearly day one, Siggy would distinguish himself time and time again on the battlefield. The funny thing about Siggy is that he wasn't very tactically adept or a military genius. He was more or less just 40k's version of the Master Chief, as he charged headfirst in the worst possible situations winning each time because he was just such a god-tier warrior. That's not to say he was a retard though. He had an open mind and craved knowledge on how to improve himself as a warrior. For example, when the Imperial Fists were tasked to fight alongside the World Eaters, Siggy became bros with Khan and even begun to chain his sword to his arm like the World Eaters did, like some kind of hardcore gladiator. This was obviously when Khan was a bro, not his currently unlikable asshole brain iteration. He was nicknamed the Black Knight after kicking so much World Eater ass and receiving an especially dark spray tan making Siggy one of the only Astartes that held genuine awe and respect from the savage world eaters. No enemy or even ally could match Sigismund. In all his hundreds of duels against friend and foe, he was only beaten once, and that was due to bullshit cheat hacks. That duel was against one of the only likable Night Lords, Servitar, who could see the future. Both warriors fought for dozens of hours non-stop. Servitar was considered an unbeatable duelist as he was an amazing fighter and could see every move his opponent was about to make. But despite knowing all of Sigismund's moves, he couldn't beat him. Imagine knowing everything your opponent will do but still not being able to win. That's Sigismund. Eventually Servitar ended the fight through an illegal headbutt, causing Sigismund to get clocked and Servitar to be disqualified. Adding a lot of credibility to the saying, nobody wins in a headbutt. As a final note before we talk about Sigismund going Super Saiyan during the Horus Heresy, Sanguinius once said that Sigismund wasn't so much the champion of Dawn as he was Death Incarnate. That's a huge compliment coming from fucking Sanguinius who was literally the Angel of Death. When Horus's male pattern boldness finally got the better of him, causing his insecurities to emerge, thus allowing him to sell his soul to hell, he declared Jihad against the Emperor and the Imperium. Sigismund and the Imperial Fist were some of the first loyalists to hear about Horus's bullshit. At the same time, Sigismund received a prophecy which was like, yo, you have two options, both involve death and suffering. Option one, you die alone and unremembered. Option two, you hang out with your Primarch and fight an unending war until you die. Sigismund was like, fuck yeah, unending war it is. Legend. As Dawn prepared for the Siege of Terra and Siggy was running around the solar system purging heretics with his big, black, girthy sword, he decided to tell Dawn about the prophecy. Dawn got mad and was like, Bitch, stop being a bloody conspiracy theorist and take your vaccine. And Siggy was like, what? And Dawn was like, oh, uh, shit, sorry. I meant fuck you and fuck your prophecy. From henceforth, you are disowned as a son of Dawn. But you're still my first captain because I like the way you kill people, boy. 
Did Sigismund allow his newfound status as an orphan to cloud his mind, to invite in chaos, to turn against his father who despised him? No, not at all. Siggy ain't no weak heretic bitch. He took this as a chance to fight even harder for the glory of his Primarch and the Emperor. Legend. Siggy proves this by taking command of the defences of Pluto, intent on holding back chaos for as long as possible. His defences are supreme, claiming countless heretic lives, feigning a retreat before re-engaging to kill more and more. Eventually the traitors are too numerous, and little Horace Aximand, that dickhead, teleports directly into Sigismund's flagship with a gigantic army. Now Siggy has a chance to escape, and even remembers the prophecy, but he's like, Fuck the prophecy, and he charges into the Chaos Marine army and begins killing them before they have even finished teleporting. In seconds, he's killed dozens of Chaos Field Astartes, Space Marines who are just as enhanced as he is, same gene seed and same gear. Siggy doesn't give a fuck though, and he becomes a superhuman blender. After suffering a dozen horrific wounds, Siggy comes face to face with Lil Horus. Now, Lil Horus is a great duelist and was fresh. But this is Sigismund we're talking about here. The wounded, exhausted Siggy gets really mad after Lil Horus mortally wounds his mate. Mad enough to go Super Saiyan 2, as Siggy proceeds to slice off Lil Horus's arm and cut open his chest. His next strike would have killed the little bitch, but then Siggy was teleported away. Don't worry Lil Horus, your death would soon come. Oh yeah, and he blew up Pluto and wiped out hundreds of heretic ships in the process. The best is yet to come though, as Siggy makes his last stand on Terra. Dawn is like, Siggy, fuck you're a lunatic, aren't ya? Here is the best sword and armor we have. You are the Emperor's champion. You are his sword and chosen warrior. Your mission is to kill every single Chaos champion that you can find. Then the chick that gave Sigismund the original prophecy that got him in shit told him that the Emperor wanted him to personally find and kill Abaddon. Hence Siggy, now decked out in hectic black armor with his black sword, went on to dunk on these fools. With the Siege of Terror raging around him, Siggy tore through Chaos's clench arsehole like a spiky butt plug. Legendary traders whose names were spoken in a hush voice across the galaxy were turned into Siggy branded sashimi with barely a flick of the Emperor's champion's wrist. He finally met his match against the now insane Khan the Betrayer. Now, I don't really like how this fight went. Basically, they fight to a standstill, then Khan gets sucked off by Khorne, gets overpowered, beats Siggy, but then Dawn just comes out of nowhere and bitch smacks Khan like he's a little insect and that's that. If I was writing it, I would make it more like Obi-Wan vs Anakin, with Siggy being Obi-Wan obviously. They were best mates and had dueled countless times. Plus Khan is supposed to die in the Siege of Terra, so why not make it so Siggy is the one to kill him? You know, adds a bit of emotional weight to stuff. I know there is still a book to come and maybe they'll get their rematch, but Khan once again winning through pure rage against the legendary Sigismund is just a bit dumb. Maybe it's because I love jujitsu, and in jits, angry people are the easiest to beat, so this rubs me the wrong way. Or maybe it's because Dawn running in and clapping Khan would be like Yoda jumping out of nowhere on Mustafa and one-shotting Anakin at the climax of their legendary duel. Either way, Siggy did cop a loss here. Not deterred from this though, Siggy got extremely horny for overpowered enemies and decided it'd be a good idea to challenge the demon Primarch Fulgrim. Now let me provide context on how absolutely bonkers an Astartes challenging a Primarch is. When fighting greater demons, it's often written that that greater demon will take on dozens of space marines at once and is able to kill four or five at a time with one strike. And these are normal greater demons. Primarchs, nine out of 10 times, beat the best greater demons around. Demon Primarchs, despite their weaknesses, are pound for pound better fighters than normal Primarchs. Hence Siggy, a space marine, challenged a being to a duel that should be leagues above him. That is leagues above him. And Siggy brought down the pain train. He balls into Fulgrim like a bullet, before hacking at him, causing Fulgrim to feel pain and rage. Fulgrim kicks Siggy away, causing the champion to simply roll back to his feet and slice deep into Fulgrim's thigh. Even when Fulgrim grabs Siggy by the throat, Siggy punches Fulgrim in the face, breaking his nose, lip, and ruining his hair. Fulgrim is able to throw Siggy hard against the wall and prepares to kill the champion when Dawn once again rocks up and saves his disowned son. Dawn then proceeds to shit on Fulgrim's tits. Take that Fulgrim, you flamboyant fuckhead. So far, Siggy had slaughtered Chaos Champions like it was nothing, challenged and nearly beat the Avatar of Khorne, and then challenged and did a fat number on the Champion of Slanesh. My man. Time for a breather, surely. Surely not! Siggy just getting warmed up! After another badass called Garviel Loken had killed Lil Horus and numerous other Trader Champions, Siggy only had one more target on his list, Abaddon himself. 
Sigismund, the Emperor's champion, tore through chaos like it was nothing, massacring thousands of the best and brightest the ruinous powers had to offer, all to get to Abaddon. Abaddon's most loyal and powerful warriors tried to block Siggy's path, but were cut down without mercy or hesitation. The prize for Abaddon's survival after the Siege of Terror can be measured in the corpses of his closest friends. Siggy would not slay Abaddon that day, but he vowed he would end the traitor's life. The Emperor fights Horus, gets turned into an overpowered version of Stephen Hawking, but not before hitting Horus with a fat Kamehameha, killing the Arch Traitor and breaking the Traitor Legions. The remaining Loyalist Legions are broken up into chapters, with Siggy taking command of the more zealous Imperial Fists, calling them the Black Templars. As the galaxy enjoyed a period of peace after the Marines like Siggy genocided chaos throughout the galaxy, the Imperium grew soft. They assumed the remaining Traitors had died, but not Siggy. For 1,000 years he stood watch over the galaxy, anticipating Abaddon's return. Now Space Marines can live for thousands of years, but they begin to properly age around after 600 years or so depending on the Marine and you know their gene seed and shit. By the time Abaddon returned, Sigismund was over 1,000 years old. He was still a legend, but he was just a bit slower. Despite this, when Abaddon and Siggy came face to face, with Abaddon still being youthful and even further empowered by chaos, before they fought, Abaddon, out of respect and fear, begged Siggy to join Chaos and try to convince him of the traitor's cause. Siggy simply replied, You keep speaking, Ezekiel. Do I look as though I am listening? Damn, dude. I don't know if Sigismund is more brutal than his sword or his words. The two fought. Abaddon's power, youth, and skill stacked against Sigismund's badassery. They fought for hours, neither one getting the advantage over the other. Siggy's age began to take its toll, and he knew he couldn't keep this up. Hence he baited Abaddon into opening up his defense and with a masterful strike, shoved his black sword through Abaddon's chest. Now literally anyone, anyone, would die from getting impaled with the gigantic black sword. But plot armor kept Abaddon alive, allowing him to cut Sigismund in half with his talon. Even in two pieces, Siggy was still spitting fire. He said word for word, you will die as your weakling father died, soulless, honorless, weeping, ashamed. God damn, usually I alter people's quotes to make them funny or make a joke out of it, but I decided not to fuck with Siggy's insults because they're just too damn perfect. Now despite Siggy being Siggy, severe disembowelment just isn't a state of being that you can sustain for long, hence Sigismund, champion of the Emperor and kicker of chaotic ass, died. Abaddon, after recovering from having a fucking sword shoved through him, had so much respect for Siggy that he cleaned his body and returned it to the Imperium with his black sword intact. He claims he did this as a dramatic way to declare war on the Imperium once again, but he, we all know it was driven by fear and respect. Fear that Siggy would one day come back to clap some ass. Legendary space runes have come and gone since Sigismund's death, but none have been able to match his skills, willpower, and level of fear that he struck into the hearts of chaos. Except maybe Tiberios, but that guy is absolutely fucked. And that does this for today guys, the lore of Sigismund and why Abaddon was scared of him. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more fearful content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.